in sports, if you want to be the best, there are no off days. This is the No Off Days podcast, the Nod Pod, alongside Chris Cato, BK in the booth. I am Scott Smith. Welcome in. Uh, Chris, you a big appetizer guy? Oh, always, the, yeah. on the apps. Sometimes I'll just do apps as the meal. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's good news. La- I feel like last week in college football, that was kind of your appetizer platter. Yeah. So, I mean, you had the big one, which was Navy Notre Dame. And aside from it being in uh, Dublin, right. uh, there probably wasn't much excitement to it. I mean, that was a complete shellacking by uh, Notre Dame. But we did see a little bit of what Sam Hartman's going to look like leading this offense. So that was probably encouraging for Irish fans, right? Great beard. They've got to be happy with the beard. Yeah. That well, was on point. In addition, yeah. Uh, USA, USC giving up, what, 28 points to San Jose State? Looks like not, their defense from last year. Not, right? g- not great. Uh, best game of the weekend, probably, what, H- Hawaii, Hawaii, Vanderbilt? Vanderbilt? Yes. You, you stayed up late on that one, didn't you? I'm a sicko, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, I wanted to see it. The Warriors almost made that comeback there. They did. Could have yeah. won. Yeah, uh, but. 1-0 and oh for the SEC. If those are appetizers, then what great of appetizers were those? It, I, <laughs> there was, might saying. have been a jalapeno popper was, was Navy Notre Dame, but the yeah. others were like maybe yeah. potato skins or not, cold, not cold your potato best, skins. Yeah, yeah, not your best apps. Not the best. But here we sit on the precipice of the real week one of college football. And, boy, we got some good ones. So I'm going to ask you for what you think is the game of the week, week one. And I'll, I'll list some out in case off the top of your mind you, you don't have it. Uh, so obviously you got Florida, Utah, yeah. you got, and that's a Thursday game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it might be over by the time that, uh, folks are seeing this. But oh, I already know. I got you, mine. You already got the prediction. Yeah, I got it. Well, we got LSU, FSU. That's, that's the one I'm going Sunday. with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's some <laughs> other big ones though too. I okay. mean, Colorado, TCU. TCU is yeah. a ranked team. This is the Fighting Primes. So we'll see. We'll see what the Buffs have in store. Year one under uh, Deion Sanders. Um, you got the the Boise Washington game that could be interesting, and then uh, a little Virginia Tennessee. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it kind of falls off a little bit after after those two big whoppers. It's a build. That's how college football season goes, right? There's a build. There's you know, always a few gems. I, I I do love, and I think the right. Duke Clemson. Yes, yes I think Absolutely. that's going to be a better game than people realize okay. on Labor Day there. Very good. Um, all right, so those are those are what we have in store. This week, but we're talking a lot of college football today on the program. Let's bring in Brian King, BK. I know you stayed up uh, late on Saturday night because I was receiving uh, an influx of texts from you. You uh, you yeah. had a particular interest in this uh, outcome. Uh, yeah, in the uh, Vandy Hawaii game. I don't see how a team can fly 4,500 miles, play in a construction zone, and still get that uh, get beat by the hook. You bet on Bandy too, didn't you? Oh this is why gosh. you were awake. <laughs> it's all. I'm surrounded by degenerates. <laughs> it killed me. It wasn't a hook, though, was it? Right? They, it was seven it was. and a half. Is what yeah. I had. Oh, yeah. oh, you got a really bad line. Yeah. yeah. It was bad. Yeah. So anyway, what we it was have good. on today's big show here, BK? Uh, keep with the college football theme. We got Laura Rutledge, college right. football Absolutely. analyst, SEC analyst, Tampa Bay native. She'll be joining us. She's and also I, talking deli cuts today. I've heard that. Yeah, well. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. More too. than appetizers. Mm, yes. Delicious. And then at the uh, end of the show, I thought, I've been, I know you guys may get tired of this, but I've been messing around with this AI stuff. Yeah. And I was bored. And I started, you could put in AI like college teams and have them redesign their mascot. And holy cow, some of these mascots they came up with is, is insane. So what I did is go and show you a few of those, see if you can tell me what college team that AI mascot is. So these are, are be- improvements, you think? Well, I just had, I put in a reimagine, you know, Florida Gators mascot. Okay. Simply like that. And then holy cow, the, the results would just pop up. And so some of these results, you don't even have to worry about AI oh, taking over fun. the world because some of these are really not that good. It's probably how the XFL and USFL get their mascots. Yeah. That's probably the <laughs> probably, yeah. It's a battle hawk now. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. See, this is one of the shows that you're going to have to you're going to have to watch the the actual podcast. So, uh, right. let me send viewers there right now. I appreciate it, BK. We'll catch up in a minute. All right. Uh, if you're listening and you want to see all those wonderful new uh, logos produced by AI, the people that are going to be taking uh, r- taking care of our jobs here shortly, go to fox13news.com slash nodpod. If you're watching and you want to listen or subscribe, uh, take out your phone, zap that QR code on the screen in the bottom right-hand corner, and there you can find all of our, all of our shows. Our show is kind of it's kind of like an appetizer, right? I mean, it, we never really get to the main dish, but um, I can assure you that it is the sampler platter, which is the king of all appetizers. Yes. 
So I am the buffalo wing to Chris Cato's mozzarella stick, I believe. <laughs> we call it here. Chips, uh, pl- it's awesome. <laughs> please subscribe. Now nah, you're a guac guy. Uh, please subscribe at fox13news.com slash nodpod. So uh, I know that you have, uh, you have a new segment that you would like to introduce, and it's college football centric. So why don't we kick this off? I, I felt like it was my time to shine i felt like and too often i let you just lead you just take because you are this is the no off days podcast with scott smith so you do often just take the wheel and steer us and you steer us down usually roads that Dead are ends no yeah. usually it's a wonderful exploration of whatever the topic is and so but this i said since we're college football i feel like is just my it's my yeah, thing. Yeah. I, not that it's not your thing, but I, I feel like it's definitely your thing. This is there are a few things I know, and this is one of them. The other is yeah. how, basket weaving. Yeah, basket weaving and how to uh, mix paint, as you taught me last week. You really do have to yeah. get the shaker. Shake it up. Uh, and so, yeah, I wanted to throw out some things because this is going to be a college football season unlike any other, right? Uh, because of the seismic decisions that have been made over the past couple of years, this season is going to give us bring the end of a lot of traditions and it's going to end a lot of the relationships that we know it's going to give us it's going to be a season are you breaking up with us (laughs) is that no what you're trying to say i i would do that via a text (laughs) because i'm terrible at breaking up (laughs) see ya uh but it's going to be a season of goodbyes and so i wanted to throw these out to you and i want to bring bk back in as well uh because i know he has deep thoughts on on many of these and I want to dust the crumbs off your shirt. <laughs> You're back. back. No. You're back. <laughs> You're back in. But I want to throw out these to you guys. And you guys tell me if you love it, don't love it or hate it. Oh, okay. and you know, we've done love it or hate it before as, a, yeah. as kind of a talker segment. But sometimes I feel like hate it's too strong where, you know, there are some things you do kind of like about it. So we're going to do love it. Don't love it or hate it. Okay. All right. I'm going to try my best to not go to don't love it. Let's start. Uh, it's it's hot or cold, baby. Come on. That does seem right. to be straddling the fence, doesn't it? All right. So first one, 2023 will be, this is probably the biggest one, the final year of the four-team college football playoff. BK, love it, don't love it, or hate it? Uh, Don't love it. I, I like the four-team playoff, but I'm open to see what the 12-team brings. Why do you like the four-team playoff? Because, it, it, I mean, I think what's we— SEC guy. No, but once we get to the 12-team playoff, I think what you're going to see is that what the four-team playoff would have been is exactly what we end up with with the 12-team playoff. So, but hey, if it's you know it generates more TV and more you know excitement for the games and why not? But yeah, I kind of I don't think the four teams broken. Yeah, I, I mean I, I love it because it's the last year. So I'm a big proponent. We've we've discussed this many a time, but. Uh, the, the bigger the playoff, the better, uh, in my estimation. I, I want to see those teams that are getting hot late in the season or, you know, Florida State last year or, or a team that, you know, has, you know, kind of put it in coast. Like, I want to I want to check them at the end of the season. I, I love the fact that we have anything that resembles what the NCAA tournament is, is good for the sport. It's good for viewing. And, you know, to, to BK's point, if at the end of the day we end up with the same, the top four teams, um, then I'm good with that. Yeah. The, the system worked, right? At least you know they earned it, yeah. right? Yeah, I love it. A few years ago, if you had asked me this, I would have said, I hate it, probably. Uh, but I've grown. I've evolved. Uh, I've realized that the four-team format, I think, was just too exclusive. I think college football is its best when the entire country, as many regions as possible, is invested in it and has a realistic a realistic path to making a playoff. We saw Cincinnati do it you know, a couple years ago, and that was kind of a one-off. Um, but the four-team format, more often than not, left you with the same characters. Uh, it, it, the problem with that is there were too many fans of other teams that didn't have a shot that by the end of the November, when college football should be its best, the fans had lost interest. Some of the players were opting out of these games. The coaches are already looking for their next opportunity. So now I think you'll have players, fans, coaches invested more deeper into the season. And you won't have the same three or four teams that are – reaping all the rewards in terms of marketing and eyeballs and everything that came with making those playoff slots. I just wish it had happened a few years 
earlier <laughs> to possibly save the Pac-12, which is something we'll get to in a moment. I mean, the counter argument is obviously it reduces the the importance of the regular season, but I, I don't think it will. I mean, you're still going to have the same same value, but it's just going to shift down the rankings a little bit. Well, and so those teams that are more fringe, that their I mean, their seasons are very valuable, winning at the end. Um, and so I don't know, man. I mean, cast a wider net. I think it's always better when you do that. And I think the beauty of it is play, having those uh, first having the buys for the top ranked teams which is how they're going to do it you're still going to be playing to win every game because you want to get one of those buys that would be yep. huge right all right so next scenario i throw at you 2023 will be the final year that texas and oklahoma are members of the big 12. start with you scott love it don't love it hate it um i i hate it um i hate it because uh I, those are big 12 teams and uh, i think that you just get kind of get mired in the wash that is uh, a, a giant conference like the sec i think it's going to happen to the the big 10 and the big 12 as well that it becomes they now part of this is contingent upon what does that playoff system look like because that's going to have to be reimagined i mean you can't have you're not going to have the same power conferences so those automatic bids it, it's probably going to be a lot more at large yeah uh, and maybe maybe just three conference winners um but i just you know it's all about the money and so i i don't like the consolidation of conferences i think it's bad for the sport i think it's bad for tradition but obviously it's good for you know lining the pockets of of athletic departments and universities across the country so i get it i just don't i don't like it and so i think you know having a consistent ou and texas at the top of the big 12 conference is good i i think that they're going to be kind of i i say this but i do think texas is going to be pretty good with a new quarterback here um for a couple more years but I just see them being kind of like uh, middle. They could be middle of the road SEC teams. And I just don't think. But that's cashing bigger checks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you you don't love it. Is all you, okay. What about you, Brian? I no, love I, it. I love it. I don't. hated it. Oh, you, hate, you hate. Okay. Yeah. For the I'm record, I'm Scott hated it. I'm trying to avoid <laughs> this. <laughs> don't love it. Okay. Yes. Okay. What about you? What about you, Brian? I love it just because uh, Scott hates it. Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's it's good for um, you. Want the, I don't want to see, you know. Texas playing Kansas. Who wants to see that game? You Kansas know? loved it a couple years ago. Yeah, what about Texas did. playing Vanderbilt? But you Texas, that? but that you're going to have Vandy. You can put Vandy in for everything. And but it's just if you go beyond even the football games, what it does for the SEC and what did these other teams do for the the Big Twelve that are joining the Big Twelve? It's just going to make it a better year-round game for the SEC. Well, for the SEC, yes, Texas yeah. and Oklahoma is going to be better, much yeah. better. Right, but but the other conferences they obviously suffer, right? No. So if well, if, I mean, if you live their... in a in the SEC bubble, yeah, it's wonderful. Bring all the heavyweights, but you know, I, outside of that, I don't think. Well, it's I mean, great. the ACC could have gone and gotten Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, Big Twelve could have kept them. Then I would have been mad know? at the ACC. And 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 also, I mean, I, these are Southwest Conference teams, you know. So you yeah. you still think of Arkansas as SEC, but that's a Southwest Conference. That's the same t conference as Texas and Oklahoma years ago. So it, I think three or four years, you know, it'll be kind of awkward. You'll be kind of, you know, but hey, you know, after that time passes, it's going to be like nothing happened. It's going to be like they actually belong in SEC, which they did. Yeah, I um, I don't love it. I don't yeah. I don't hate it as much as Scott does, but I don't love it because it is eroding tradition. I don't like that this was the first domino that fell, this territory grab by, I don't know, you know, we blame the SEC, blame Texas and Oklahoma, either way. This was the first yeah. kind of Jenga piece that was pulled out, and then you had, That's you know, point. then Big Ten was trying to grab USC, UCLA, and now look at where we are. And and I don't like it. I don't like the end of um, rivalry rivalry games like Bedlam. Um, and I, I do feel like the one reason I didn't say I hate it is because it will be awesome to see things like Georgia going on the road to Texas or Oklahoma going to play in Death Valley and LSU. You know, every other year you may get something like that. That's what the 12 team playoff is for. And I, well, I also think, having gone to the Texas Alabama game last year, that the passion and the tradition surrounding Texas and Oklahoma will fit in well with the SEC. But overall, I don't love it because of what it caused. And yeah, it's uh, it, it's greed and it, it strips away tradition. And yeah. tradition is what we love about college football, right? Your take just made me hate it all the more. Okay, good. He's a strong I, hate I, now. I forgot to make the point that it started this 18 car pile up. All right, go it ahead. It did. Okay. All right. So here's the next one. 2023 will be the final year of divisions in the SEC and the Big Ten. Let's go to BK. Love it. 
Don't love it, hate it. Uh, I love it, I guess. I'm not kind of <laughs> indifferent to it. I mean, yeah, it's been 2017. I really <laughs> loved it because that's when I think Alabama didn't win the division but won the national championship. It's better. You know, it's, it's going to be better because it's not fair if they, you know, like uh, Tennessee's a second-ranked team in the SEC East, but have a better record than LSU and other teams in the SEC West, but they're shut out of the championship game. So, yeah. you, you know, it's just like the – 12 team playoff, you're going to guarantee the top two teams will be playing in the championship games. Okay. So he was a lukewarm love it. What about you, Scott? Same reasons I, I love it. I, I lo- you're a strong love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I like the tradition of divisions, I suppose, but um, that's a that's a small tradition to give up for what I think is the greater good. Get the best two teams out of your conference. Yeah, I think tradition, I think divisions were always silly. They started them when the championship games came about. I think it's a bad way to decide who's the best team in your conference because quite often the two best teams don't end up playing each other the big 12 has done it the right way for the past decade or so with their kind of round robin format the teams with the two best records play each other for the championship the acc this year will be the first year uh, 2023 that the acc does not have divisions so glad that divisions are gone goodbye divisions all right 2023 most likely unless my bold prediction about the oregon state beavers saving the pac-12 comes true (laughs) 2023 will be the final year for the pac-12 Scott as our resident Pac-12 homer. Yeah, well, obviously I hate it. I mean, it's 108 years of tradition. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see how this is good for uh, all those major universities out there that have, you know, it's I, I, what happens with the, the Rose Bowl. Obviously, is affected. Like, I just think it's, yeah, it's not good. It's not good for college football. It's, it's not good for, again, outside of the financial, um, you know kickbacks that that the schools that are heading to other conferences get i just yeah i hate it but hey look you can see your ducks now play in the eastern time zone i do want to see them yeah at the big house or yeah it'll be cool to to maybe go to a game in the big 10 but um aside from the novelty of that yeah would you consider bumping it up to a don't love it since you could see no. your ducks. No, okay. No, no. He's not going to do a don't love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's drawing a line in the set. Yeah. What about you, Brian? I uh, don't love it. I mean, it's a sad byproduct of, what, of everything that happens, but, you know, it's evolution, I guess. I mean, it's I uh, ultimately thinks the Pac-12's fault for not for Agreed. allowing this to happen. Yeah, agree. But, but the fact that it has, yeah, it's going to be kind of sad. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of weird to see what's going to become of, like, the Rose Bowl. I mean, is it going? I mean, well, it's going to be played in the middle of the season now when Penn State goes to USC. Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. What kept you from saying you hate it? There's something you kind of like about it. Uh, I just, I've never. It's just been. There's very few games in the Pac-12, and Scott's going to say I'm an SEC homer. Or whatever. I think it's already clear with your first three <laughs> no, answers. but there's, there's just very few games in the in the Pac-12 that I just must see. You know, now granted, there's been more of late. You know, with Oregon coming on, Washington coming on, but I mean, seriously, like yeah, USC, Cal- was, USC was never good. If no, you, but no, I'm saying Brian, USC if you'll stay up to watch Hawaii and Vanderbilt, you would stay up to watch yeah, Oregon State and Washington win. State. I mean, there's some, there's some pretty good matchups there. I hear you though. I say I, I don't love it um, and almost hate it. Boy, that's very. Why can't I just pick a thing? I say I don't love it because I again don't like the erosion of tradition, and I really don't like the fact that. Now we don't get the Apple Cup every year, Washington, Washington State. Right. We don't get the game formerly known as the Civil War. We still call it the Civil War, right? Yes. Oregon and Oregon State. I, that's sad to me. And and also when you have Stanford and Washington State and Cal. Now, by the time people listen to this, they may have joined, who knows, the ACC or Big 12. But they're just out there floundering. And these aren't like, I mean, Stanford gave us John Elway and Christian McCaffrey and Andrew Luck. I mean, these, these aren't also ran programs. Washington State, they had great years under Mike Leach. Oregon State is positioned to, you know, I think they're ranked 18 preseason. They're going to be a really good team this year. So that's what's sad to me. And so, you know, even though we will get to see some kind of bowl game like matchups in the regular season, if Ohio State's traveling to Washington or, you know, uh, is it Oregon coming to Camp Randall, whatever? I, I really don't like it just because, again, it's it's the end of a lot of traditions. Yeah. and that You just added a new category. Really don't like I really, it. I really don't <laughs> like it. You're, yeah. you're fumbling your own game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up different, different terms here. Uh, all right, so, and I'll leave it with this one, I think. Uh, 2020, 2023 will be the final year of, we can't play the music because we're, you know, owned by Fox and it's on CBS. But uh, 2023 will be the final year of the SEC on CBS. Scott, love it, don't love it, hate it. Can I make a fourth category? 
Sure, I've made three already. I don't care. You don't I, care? Yeah, I, don't, no? I, I could care less. Um, yeah, network affiliations, I mean, other than w whether it would be, I mean, it'd be nice if it was on Fox, right? But uh, outside of that, I, I really, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, there's no tradition. I know for you guys as SEC guys, you, you love CBS. I'm assuming you, you're going to hate it, but <clears throat> yeah, I don't care. All right, I should have gone Brian first and not gone to Scott at all. <laughs> Brian, I knew you'll have a fiery opinion about this. Love it, don't love it, hate it. I'm kind of with Scott. It doesn't matter to me, oh. you know, because I remember when I thought when ABC lost it. Remember when Keith Jackson used to do, you know, SEC games, and you thought that was it. Then when CBS took over, you thought, oh, this is going to be the end of it. But you know, they carried the torch, and I'm sure ABC, ESPN will do the same thing. So. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, again, just like everything else. It'll take a while to get used to, but once you do, it's going to be like you know, it's always been. It's okay. on the T for you. Well, I hate it, Crush okay? Hate. Yeah. I, I hate it, even though I do kind of like the fact that we won't have to hear Gary Danielson choke with glee when Alabama starts <laughs> to falter against some opponent. Uh, no, I, I, I hate it because – I, this is part of my Saturday tradition. I hear that music, that theme song, and I know I'm going to walk into the living room and see, you know, Tennessee at Georgia or Auburn at Florida. And now I'm going to hear that music and walk in and see Minnesota at Iowa. And it's, it's by the way, let me elaborate. It's because CBS isn't, CBS will be broadcasting Big Ten games starting next season, and they're taking that uh, theme song, that theme music, and they're playing it, uh, they're using it for their Big Ten openings now. And, uh, it's going to be like uh, it's going to take some retraining for me. Uh, I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. Hearing that music with Minnesota and Iowa on, it's going to be like parking your uh, <laughs> Porsche Carrera next to a mobile home. It's not going to look right. Mm. They they played. I don't know if you caught the Jacksonville State U UTEP game this weekend. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there's a man. There's another one. He was up late. Holy <laughs> BK. <laughs> but they need to get him a better theme. hobby. That was CBS Sports Network. But they played that theme during for like bump intros and everything for yeah. that game. And I'm going, oh, it's kind of out of place. Yeah. But you did. You kind of it perked your ears up a little bit. The theme. So yeah, it'll take a while to get used to. But yeah, yeah I can kind of don't see like it. it. Well, thank you guys for going this down that fun, little experimental road with yeah. me. I appreciate that. It's the last time I'll ever get to lead anything on yeah. here. So I hope I left it all out on the no. floor. It seems like we could have just done the last one for your sake. That was <laughs> the one that you got. <laughs> that was self-indulgent, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> really, really angry about that. Okay, very good. Uh, this is um, our second to last week of previewing NFL divisions. Uh, and so today we are we are diving into the AFC South. We will end it next week on the NFC South. So let's start in the AFC South. And um, we had a, a better – did you have a better idea of where you wanted to take the back and forth? You yeah. want to just lay it out? I feel like let's just go back and forth. Okay. Like let's do, okay. you know. All right. I'll we'll, lead it off this time. Okay. Um, so my last place team in the AFC South in 2023 is going to be the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they finished 4-12-1 last year. Um, between the the nastiness that we've seen on the Jonathan Taylor front and demanding trades, whether he is, is traded this offseason or not, I, I'm probably not. I don't know. Uh, they have a rookie quarterback, Anthony Richardson, for Gator fans. I mean, for as, as much as this guy is obviously a man-child. He's obviously he's also um, inconsistent too, and I think that's a lot of pressure. First year head coach, taking over. Uh, they have an inexperienced secondary back into their defense, and I, this just to me it all adds up to a struggle bus of a season for, for Indy. Yep, agreed. I if this if Jonathan Taylor doesn't play, I also have them fourth. If he plays, maybe third. Really? But yeah, you think he, that's it's that much of a factor. Well, I do, um, but I agree for the reasons that you stated there that. I, so when you look at three and four, I um, there's more of an unknown with Anthony Richardson and Shane Steichen and how that's yeah. going to look. And maybe we look foolish at the end of this year. And Anthony Richardson is is amazing, but I, you know, he just didn't show me enough in college uh, as a passer yet. I'm not saying he can't improve um, for me to have a lot of faith in that. So I also have the Colts fourth. If there's no Jonathan Taylor, again, I want to say that. And the Texans third. I'm a, I'm really curious about the Texans. You know, I think C.J. Stroud is going to be good. Um, and D'Amico Ryans, I think, is going to have the defense. D'Amico Ryans and Will Anderson Jr. are going to have the defense playing better uh, from, from the start. Damian Pierce is nice. Uh, we get John Mechie the third as a, as a receiver yeah. for C.J. Stroud. He hasn't played yet because of leukemia. Uh, he had that battle last season. 
So, I, you know, maybe they could surprise some people. I, that's why I feel pretty good about them in that third spot there. Okay. So you, you had Texans third? I do, yeah. Um, here's my surprise. I got the Titans falling to third. Uh, they finished 7-10 and last year. Derrick Henry, um, he's going to have to carry the load. Obviously, that's a lot to ask a guy that's approaching 30 years old. Their O-line kind of stinks. Uh, defense is meh. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is like the quintessential serviceable quarterback. I don't think he's top-end talent. I think he's decent. Uh, they do add DeAndre Hopkins. That is a little bit of a wild card on their offense. That they, They've needed a big play receiver like that, and – he could be the, the only thing. I mean, Hopkins is still. I've not seen him really regularly produce in about three years. Yeah, it's been a so, while. So I mean, yeah. that I don't know. I, that's why I just I could see this team dipping a little bit. But let me just preface this whole thing by thinking by by saying that I think the AFC South is going to be one of the worst divisions in the NFL this year. So uh, you know, it's I think a lot of teams are going to be be beating up on these teams. Um, but yeah, I, I got the Titans coming in at third. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I said my third already. The Texans. I've got the Titans as second, but it's a very timid second. They could be third. You don't love it. I do not love it. I do not love it. They could easily be third. Uh, you realize last year they finished bottom three in the league in both passing offense and passing defense. That's hard to do, and I don't know that they've. But when you put your mind to something, <laughs> you know? I don't know that they're going to do much better. On either of those, I do like the – I think I like the DeAndre Hopkins edition. But what is Ryan Tannehill at age 35? I could see by, you know, middle of the season, maybe they've moved on to Will Levis or – Is Tannehill really 35? He is, really? yeah. He wow. ages ages well, doesn't he? Um, I was thinking he was younger. Man. It's got some tread on the tires, as does Derrick Henry. You know, he's uh, – can, can, can he carry the offense again? he's going to end up getting hurt like that's what's happened the last two seasons and they have an improved offensive line really um they did have a good first round pick peter skaronsky that maybe he can step in and help that o-line yeah um but they have a what a rookie yeah yeah they have a they have a pretty no wait that's my next one um i like Vra- i mean vrabel is a guy that i would i would be willing to bet on i just yeah i i the think trajectory in this team seems like it's heading the other way i know their win total vegas has them at seven and a half and i think it's under that yeah, yeah. I Ooh. think, like you said, it's a it's a pretty bad division all okay. the way around. So you you got a second place team that has six or fewer wins, uh, seven, seven wins. Okay. Yeah. So you, I thought you said it was set at seven and, and you took the under, but yeah, seven and it, a half. It's probably yeah. Yeah. It's, it's about right. All right. I got my second place team as the the Texans, and it's not really I don't love them, uh, but I just think again overall bad division. Um, the Texans O line Texans O line is actually pretty decent, which makes life a lot easier for a rookie quarterback. So I don't know that you're gonna see like C J Stroud like knock your socks off good, but I think he's at least gonna be serviceable enough uh, to to make that offense hum a little bit. Um, Let's see. Uh, D'Amico Ryans, I like him. I mean, he's he's injected some youth in there. You know, some there's a lot of youth, a lot of excitement as well. It's just a matter of how, how quickly. I mean, this is a total rebuild. Yeah. I mean, there, there's still there, – there's a lot of deficiencies on this team. Um, but – I think if you have an energetic coach that knows how to kind of run a defense, you're, I think Will Anderson's going to be an immediate plug-and-play hit. Um, and so I, I think their defense could hold the line a little bit for this team. Um, but, yeah, receiving-wise, their receiving core is not good. Um, you know, you mentioned Mechie. He could be a, a potential hit here as a rookie. Uh, they also have uh, another rookie in Tank Dell that, that yeah. you know, they, they think yeah. highly of. So, but in a bad division, I think they, they kind of sneak up to second place. Okay. Boy, we're on the same this, page. This sounds like we're like doctors walking through an e- ER triage and just this guy doesn't have a chance. <laughs> He's got a massive head wound. Just He's not going to make am. it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to amputate that guy's like So it leaves us with Jag- the Jaguars in first yeah, place. We're in agreement. It's probably the easiest choice. But again, this could be a team that wins. They won nine games last year and won the division. I could see that happening again. I, but look at their schedule. They have a tough schedule. They're hosting the Chiefs, the 49ers, the Ravens, and Bengals. That's yeah. That's and brutal. they're facing the Bills and Steelers on the road. So Ooh. they need to beat up on. They need to beat up on this division. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll let you go through all the positive things about it. Okay. But uh, I, I don't. I think the offensive line is going to be a problem too for Trevor Lawrence because they lost Jawan Taylor in free agency. Yeah. Cam Robinson suspended for the first four games. It could be. Yucky for Jacksonville, too, if they didn't have Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley. I just think with as much as that stock rose last year uh, in what we saw from Trevor Lawrence and kind of being on the same page in that Doug Peterson offense, I, I, I don't know how you don't buy. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they're a playoff team, and I think, I think they might creep up to maybe 10, 11 wins. I mean, I, 
Look, man, they caught fire last year, so that's special. Can you can you carry that over into another year? I think they've also added in Calvin Ridley. That's going to help out what I think is a pretty decent receiving core. Um, they already have you know guys like Christian Kirk, and they have um, Zay Jones. Mm-hmm. I like Travis Etienne at running back. So th- I think they have some good playmakers there. Um, I like Doug Peterson. You got a, a Super Bowl winning coach leading the way, and yeah. you know I, th- I think that they can beat up on the rest of the division and and sneak some wins. I mean, you mentioned all the tough out of division games but keep in mind they're also playing these other guys <laughs> twice right. a year so i think they might be able to you know it i mean if you if you come away with i don't know uh, you know six five six wins within the division that's yeah. going to pad out your your record a lot too so yeah i like the jacks okay yeah okay you're done no, you, that's, you only yeah. wanted negative you only said negative things about the jags well, I thought you were going to say all the good, good things. you're going to say all the good things. Well, the good things are obvious. It's the second year under Doug Peterson, like you said, he's yeah. a Super Bowl winning coach, and and Trevor Lawrence is going to only get better. I think Trevor Lawrence is already a maybe top eight or nine quarterback in the league. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, that's why they're go- that's why they're going to win games. They won eight of their last eleven last year. I yeah. mean, they're they did the opposite of the Titans. The Titans lost their last seven, and these guys took off. So, yeah, was that good enough for you? Yeah, no, Are you happy? Did I, I pump think you, up your you, pump up your Jags enough? That, you can just yeah, <laughs> Chef's kiss right there. Oh boy! All right. Speaking of Chef, um, we I think it's time for our next segment now to bring in our guest. I can actually. Can you smell it? Yes. Can you, can you smell the ham baking it's as we speak? Glazed and delicious. Let's jump into it. Well, Chris, our guest today is the host of ESPN's NFL Live, SEC Nation, over on the SEC Network. She is a Florida native as well. She bleeds the orange and blue. We welcome Laura Rutledge to the show. So the Sunshine State kind of sends you a, a a welcome home virtually. Welcome in, Laura. Oh, thank you. I miss my Sunshine State, guys. It's one of the best places in all the world. I will always say that um, and just truly enjoy being able to talk to y'all and being able to talk a little bit about Florida. Um, and, and you're in my old stomping grounds, too, of Tampa. So I miss it that in that area for sure. I think where you're standing looks pretty good, too, surrounded by a lot of food. I'm reading your online resume here, and I was surprised to learn that you've recently become a tailgating expert. I was wondering if you might tell us about that. You know, you have to go get a degree in tailgating. It's a whole process. Um, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to do it. But, yeah, thanks to Honey Baked Ham, we have these delicious tailgate packs that I do want to tell you guys about because – they're really going to give fans an opportunity to not only have just yummy food that is so synonymous with what we think about when it comes to honey baked ham, that flavor that you all know and associate with special occasions, but it's also really convenient and easy. So you've got this gorgeous bone in half ham. This is part of the half ham playmaker pack. Mm. You grab this, you get your sides, you've got your broccoli bacon bliss right here, as Holy well as your moly. potato salad. I know you like that alliteration on the broccoli. You've got the the Hawaiian roll, so you can make a little slider this way or just have the ham itself. It, it stands alone as an absolute star. The pick two slider pack, another personal favorite of mine. You guys, I, I think you're probably capable wow. of popping these guys in the oven mm-hmm. for 20 minutes. You've got ham and Swiss. You've got turkey and cheddar. Nice little crunch with the pickles that they provide for you, as well as the garlic butter that you just pour over the top. So it looks like you went to a lot of trouble. It looks like I am a master chef here, but yet um, all that happened was Honey Baked Ham just delivered and provided this for us. So Chris, um, I'm sending how... you guys some through the screen. Oh, well, I don't know how we're going to proceed now. I- I'm starving, and I can only think of what I'm going to eat for lunch today. Uh, <laughs> you've been to a lot of college football venues. Where- where's the coolest place to tailgate? Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to take Florida out because people just think I'm way too biased. But I do love Gainesville. I hope everyone knows that. Um, And and truly, it's got its own unique vibe. I would point out Ole Miss. And I don't know if you guys have ever done the Grove, but if you haven't, you need to do it. It's a bucket list item as a college football fan. Just pick any game, but pick a big game, you know, go there. You get the chandeliers under the tailgate tents in the Grove. They go all out and then some. Um, people are dressed to the nines. It's just a whole vibe. And then you kind of see the the walk from the Grove to the stadium before the game. And there's still a lot of people still in the Grove. They enjoy the game from there. But it's just a party and something that I think uh, every college football or just football fan in general should be able to enjoy if they can make it happen. 
what do they say? They uh, may lose the game, but they've never lost a party in the there group, right? That's, That's the saying there. Yeah, they that don't is, lose the tailgate, man. That is they a don't. Sp special mm -hmm. place. Well, let's get back to your Florida bias then. Your, your Gators uh, coming into the second year with Billy Napier here. Uh, what's the outlook? Obviously, Anthony Richardson is gone. They announced Graham Mertz as the starter. What do you see the Gators' ceiling being this season, Laura? Yeah, I mean <laughs> – going to be interesting to see I, I was glad that they got Graham Mertz in the transfer portal and I think that you know look when you looked around at the options available for them they did the best they could and and I'm hoping I'm optimistic for what they can do I mean look the ceiling you know um I would say at this point we'd be real happy if they win seven games and I think I'm being pretty realistic there and as fair as I possibly can be um, I hope that Florida surprises some people. I, I actually recently spoke to the team and the vibe amongst the players was we're going to surprise people. Everyone's doubting us. And, and it sounds good saying that, right? You got to go out and actually show it. They've got an opportunity against Utah to make a statement early on. Um, but I think if anything, as a person who follows this team and cares about it and Florida fans should feel this way too, we're tired of being told to be patient, but this may be a year of trying to watch the games and saying okay do they look like they're making progress offensively and and i hope that billy napier is given that chance at least um and then you know this is an impatient business we'll see what happens from there but i'm optimistic that at least we'll see a little bit more firepower which is what he was brought in to do it's kind of like baking a ham chris i mean you have to wait for it to cook right you can't rush or it. you could just call up honey bake and it's instant you just get it immediately you get your party pack uh, i'm curious because uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if kirby smart in, in uh, athens can can <laughs> preach the same message to his crew i think everybody's expecting the three-peat to happen uh, this year but it's it's tough to do with a new offensive coordinator you got a new quarterback um, mm -hmm. is there another team i mean i don't know if we're bored with the georgia narrative yet but is there another team that has your interest across the college football landscape that you think hey this could be the team that kind of knocks over the, the the Georgia run yeah look I mean I don't think this would happen until the college football playoff because obviously they wouldn't meet up until then but I think Michigan is going to be a force to be reckoned with so whether they would meet up in the national championship or maybe even the college football playoff semifinal game potentially which, by the way, would be an excellent game. You think about those two fan bases. We thought maybe we were going to see it before, but anyway, we have seen it, but you know what I mean. So I, I would say Michigan's right there. I love that Blake Corum's going to be back at running back. And, you know, with Harbaugh, and he's probably got a little chip on his shoulder with everything that's been going on, they're just going to be really, really good. Now, they've got to contend with Ohio State in the Big Ten, but that hadn't been a huge problem for him of late, as we all know. Um, I would say they're probably my biggest threat to Georgia. If you're looking within the SEC, let's say you get to the SEC championship, which I, I frankly think that Georgia is not going to have very much trouble being the SEC East representative. But let's say LSU maybe has knocked off Alabama and they've gotten there to that SEC championship game. They'd be, I think, a tough out for Georgia, maybe give them a little trouble there. And maybe even Alabama, too. I, I, I can't even believe I'm saying it that way, but... We just do have questions at quarterback for Alabama. I think we may see them play both Ty Simpson and Jalen Milrow, uh, but they, they always come up with something, right? I mean, last year was an Alabama team that everybody's like, oh man, you know, this is one of their worst teams. And yet they were right there knocking on the door of the college football playoff for them. You know, that's a down year. So uh, those would be some to look out for, for sure. You're speaking Chris's love language right now. I think we may see a shift, shift back to the Nick Saban offensive old little run heavy rest your defense more and let that yep. defense dominate yeah wearing one of my many alabama t-shirts now as we speak laura i'm sorry you can't see that but i want to talk to you oh, real tied. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah i want to talk to you about how to manage a blended sec family you know you're a gator your husband josh Ooh. went to alabama so i know you guys just had your second child congratulations on that Congrats. but i want to get Thank this you. i want to get the strategy here uh, do you raise one as an alabama fan and the other <laughs> as a gator fan or do you just kind of let their allegiances develop naturally okay so i tried really hard to like tell our daughter reese hey go gators you know go gators like just bringing that into conversation um and all she ever does is either yell go dogs or roll tide which the go dogs <laughs> oh. is funny because i'm like girl that doesn't really work for either one of us but okay but she knows from her helmet picks that she's been right about georgia so she loves the go dogs but she, I don't know when Josh is doing this, but she is just saying roll tide like right and left. And it's pretty funny because we live in Connecticut because that's where ESPN's based. So we're not in the South, you know, regularly. 
and at her preschool, she's taught her entire preschool class to say roll time. Yes. And all these little <laughs> oh, three year olds wow. are like, I didn't. They go home and their parents, you know, get, people in Connecticut aren't necessarily SEC fans or probably not Alabama fans. They're like, where is my child learning this? So Reese, uh, you know, has, has made her impact known for sure. And I'm still holding out for Jack, okay? He might be a mama's <laughs> boy and he'll be like, dude, you got to be my little Gator fan with me. We'll see. Uh, it sounds like Josh is doing a great job. Yeah, Hats early, off to him. Early indoctrination. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts, Laura, on Gosh. the NFL situation. Obviously, the, the Bucks here um, going with uh, Baker Mayfield as starting quarterback. In your estimation, is is Baker a bridge quarterback or a guy that they can build the franchise around? You know, I hate to count Baker Mayfield out, and I actually love that he's been named the starting quarterback. I think the NFC South is kind of anybody's to win right now, so you never know. Could be Baker uh, that gets all that done for him, and I do think he's a bridge. Uh, don't tell him I said that. It may serve as motivation, though, so he doesn't care what I think, but you know what I mean. Um, I, I think what would be really interesting for the Bucks, though, is if somehow he's not, and that frees up an opportunity to invest in other positions and to build around him. We've seen him have success, right? And uh, he had success behind offensive lines that weren't that good. And so maybe there's a chance to say with a new opportunity, a team that believes in him, a team that would be interested in investing around him, certainly if he proves to be worthy of that, maybe he can actually prove everybody wrong and have a resurgence, which is almost impossible to do in this league. Laura, before we let you go, I know Chris wants to ask it. He's obviously a huge Bama fan. Uh, I will ask it for him. You've interviewed Nick Saban uh, probably a handful of times. What does he smell like? <laughs> Don't say ham. Hello. Um, no. Yeah, he smells like ham. No. <laughs> no, he smells he smells good. He smells yeah. like very fresh, I feel like. Yeah. Um, he drinks a lot of coffee, but he doesn't smell like coffee, mm. so – yeah, no, he just he smells really good. Now I'm going to smell him the next time I see yeah. him, okay? And I'll report back. Listerine and pipe tobacco. All right, Laura <laughs> Rutledge, thank you very good. We got our tailgate set for the season ahead. Oh, please send us a ham, oh, Laura. Oh, looks good. It's glistening. Yeah, apologies if that was a little bit of an un uncomfortable question, but I figured you would want to know what Nick Saban smelt like and, and BK as well. Not uncomfortable at all. Okay, I've good. Th I've thought about this a lot. Yeah, what, do you have any guesses as to what it might? If you could just get one good whiff. Oh. He walks by you. You <laughs> breathe him in. I've sh I've shaken his hand before. Okay, but I didn't sniff him. Uh, well, I, I think he would smell like an oatmeal cream pie. <laughs> oh, he does love those. He does love yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. A little little Debbie. Yeah, let's bring BK in. I you know maybe like hairspray and Old Spice or no no what, <laughs> like. I do, are you at all curious, Brian? Uh, not until you just mentioned okay. it. Okay, all right. Laura there. All right, but uh, yeah. Old milk cream pies may work. Yeah. Maybe you, smells like victory. You can't spell it's, Brian without AI. Let's jump into it. <laughs> what do we got nice. here, BK? Uh, just again, I, I was bored and I just put in some, uh, you know, this AI thing, guys. If you haven't tried it, you should try it. Just It's a good time killer. I mean, I put in mascots. <laughs> You're always <laughs> if, put, if the you... Jacksonville State game's not, not peaking interest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put in these mascots, and I wanted AI to say, hey, I, I reinvent what these mascots would look like and yeah. just see what would come up. And I was just floored by how they looked. I mean, they had some similarities to the current mascot, but it was way off. So we'll just go ahead and get started. I'll show you what ones I put in. This is Florida and Florida State. Up, so you can kind of see the. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That gator looks like a dragon. It does. Sea beast. That's pretty it's, awesome, actually. That's Nessie. That is really. It's not, what the I, Florida State? I'm looks totally like a, confused by. What is that? It, I don't it's know. Like it's a like a raccoon. It's like a badger. A badger. That so that's where the AI kind of messes up. Body so. of Bobby Bowden. <laughs> it's <laughs> a badger head on Bobby Bowden's body. <laughs> is that? It looks They're like also, a little demon. Uh, got USF, UCF. Uh, what do those look like? Uh, let's see, right there. Okay. Oh, yes. so, what? <laughs> okay. So, the, so it's a the bull. Uh, yeah, you yeah. kind of see. It's like so, a white bull with a glowing just, head and it, a mustache. It's just not right. The, do you see? <laughs> he's, one, I guess. he's got a Groucho he, Marx mustache. He's wearing eyeshadow too. Do you notice the bull is wearing eyeshadow? <laughs> he this is. is Those like, are like tattooed eyebrows. My my son is into Pokemon, and this is what a Pokemon version of a bull would look yeah. like. Yeah, and wow. then like the knights. Like, what is that? That's. Again, that's a Gigimon right there, or whatever. Yes, yeah, it's a Gigimon. Dojimon. Yeah, it's Pikachu. Pikachu, Pikachu <laughs> trying to rob a bank. Wearing got a top a, hat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's what we'll do. College. Let's. Uh, I'm going to put some up, and you try to tell me what school it is. It's yeah. going to be impossible. Yeah. No, nah, you may be able to get okay. it. Okay, let's go to the first one, John. And 
Any ideas? Well, isn't he holding? Is he holding a Miami? It looks like Miami colors. It's I mean, it's green and orange. It's the, yes. It's but the it's a guy thing. with like a side fro. Um, it's in he like does have he's a, a his teeth are like this. He's like, gritted teeth. So it's a, a team that struggles in the fourth quarter. Clearly, that's <laughs> Miami. Right? Yeah. yeah, that is Miami. Very okay. good. All right. How about this one? This a little more tougher. Boom. What do you I, think? It's got to be. Well, that's I mean, the Mies Michi- and blue. Yeah, Michigan. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but the, the team colors do give it away. Yeah, but they could. They and could. it's it is some type of you know it's a, like a the dog. It looks like a canine. It's, um, a, it's a coyote, I believe. Yeah. You think so? Okay. The wily coyote. What, is a wolverine in the canine family no. or in a, no, fe- a the feline? Oh, what is a wolverine? I don't it's know. A cat it's like a thing. badger. Yeah. 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 That is actually Notre Dame. Really? That's yes. an Irish coyote. Okay, I was thinking maybe, yeah. Maybe it's an Irish. Well, it's not an Irish what, setter. What's the M? What's the M on the jersey for, though? The, I don't know. See, they, none of these things can put Mo- the names on there, so I don't think they're. <laughs> I think Brian mistyped in the ad. <laughs> he, he typed Motor Dame. He did. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now it all makes sense. Motor Dame. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Next one, Fudge Sean. fingers. All right. What you got here? What's okay. that one? Ah. Uh, well, let's see. It looks like some type of demon, uh, another demon, um, but red and white. Golly, I, my instinct w- Im- immediately was to say Ohio State, but, but I don't know. I think it's a badger. I think it's pretty close to it's. That's the closest one so far to think, what the actual Bucky the Badger. So you think Wisconsin? I think it's Wisconsin. Yeah. What we got? It is Alabama. Oh, really? yes. What? Oh. What is that? I may have misspelled that one too. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so that's what they think of. That's what AI I just thinks. I put in reimagine Alabama Crimson Tide mascot. Oh, and it, that's oh what's what on it his hat? Out. What's on his hat? Is that looks like some. Uh, it, looks like I don't he, know. He's a Shriner. He's got one of those little <laughs> Shriner hats on. It makes about as much sense as an elephant, I suppose. So, <laughs> oh. all right. Okay, this is my favorite one by far. By far. Okay. Yeah, I, I laughed when I saw. John. Any idea? <laughs> 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 that's a, a duck that's going to sink fast, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that is wow. Chip Kelly with oh a duck goodness. head on. That is I mean, so bad. How crazy is that one? It's like it's a pointed duck beak, uh, and he's he's wearing – he looks like a, a, like Mickey, like kind of like a – he's got like a dwarf outfit on. Yeah. And it, a barrel-chested man. Kind of a plus-size body. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> – All right. That's definitely a 50-year-old man, not yep. uh, not a college-age kid as the mascot. Well, it might have so. been – who was uh, the Belushi character in Animal House? Yeah. Could have been him. Yeah. yeah could yeah, be. That was at Oregon, right? I think we both we both believe that's an Oregon duck. Ooh, Arizona State. Stop. No, sun, I'm kidding. Uh, no. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say the Sun Devil was the previous thing you showed us. Okay, oh, one more. Awful. How about this one? Okay. This one kind of easy. Uh, Georgia, Georgia, dead on it. Okay, it? okay. Yeah, it's a bulldog. Yeah, that's that's their best one. Of course, it had to get Georgia right. Georgia always gets the yeah. good things. God yeah, me. he's squatting though. He looks he looks <laughs> uncomfortable. Well, this you know, is there any more? Be can that's it. Well, I got one more okay. if you want it. You yeah. want one more? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, hit me with it. Go ahead, Sean. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. Uh, that's a cute bear. What's this shirt? Say? It's just letters. It's that's where they can't put yeah. the schools oh, on. Okay. AI's got. So it looks like a squirrel. Is there any chipmunks? Any uh, fighting chipmunks? Could be a gopher. Is the this chi- Minnesota golden gophers? Uh, but he's not golden. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Wisconsin. I think that's a badger. That's a very friendly Sado? badger. Um, the colors have been correct so far. So now I'm just going through the Rolodex. Of, that could be Wisconsin color. That could be Rutgers. Uh <laughs> That's not a Scarlet Knight, though. <laughs> All right, okay. I don't. AI's weird. I'm gonna say it's Rutgers. Uh, that is your Ohio State. Oh, oh okay. that's a that's a there's Buckeye. The, that the is Buckeye. a Buckeye for some okay. reason. Man. So yeah. These are these are awful. So I, if everybody's worried about AI taking over, and well, there you, you go. Don't have to. So there's because the silver that's line. what they come up with. Come on. So there's certain things that uh, we have to leave it to humans to do. And right. One of those things is. Uh, just to come up with mascots. Although we although they're already taken care of. So. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> there will be other teams. There will be XFL teams that need a mascot in the yeah. future. Yeah, NFL absolutely. Teams. Okay, that was fun. That was a nice yeah. little experiment. Um, yeah. All right.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI can stay stay away from the mascot biz. I hope sure. that was good for our audio audience. Do you think we I think that they, Yeah, I think they're twisting right now. They probably have clicked <laughs> off. Anyway. Don't, don't click off. Well, please. hopefully you enjoyed all the college football content and our little preview for the NFL season ahead. Again, next week we have the NFC South that we're going to break down, uh, see how those Baker-led Buccaneers uh, look in 2023, and uh, it should be a fun show. So uh, until then, though, I mean, it, it's time to go, I suppose. It is. Okay. Let's go uh, have those appetizers. Very good. Let's get those. Let's warm up those uh, those baked potato peels. I can't wait to eat them. Those poppers. Until the next time we are on, there are no off days. And the spiral ham, too. Would be good. Oh, that would be good.